Our guest joins us today from Israel. Yael Eckstein is the president of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Their TV program, Christians and Jews, airs right here on Miracle Channel. She's also the author of a brand new book called Generation to Generation. And you can check out that book online at ifcj.org. So good to have you with us again, Yael. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be back with you. You bet. Well, first of all, for any viewers, again, not familiar with what you do in your organization, tell us a bit about it, the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Well, thank God we are the largest philanthropic organization in all of Israel, which means that it's Christians around the world through the fellowship who are playing a tangible role in biblical prophecy coming to fruition of bringing the Jewish people home from all four corners of the earth. And we have humanitarian programs as well, also in the vision of the Bible, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, the elderly, the orphans, that we use the Bible as our rule book of where uh, humanitarian organizations should be helping. Okay, wonderful. Well, keep up the good work there, and I know you get a lot of help from Canadians here as well in that. So can you give us a brief snapshot of uh, what your new book is about? Well, it was actually a project that I started working on after my father passed away, uh, Rabbi Yechiel Eckstein, a little bit over a year ago. And after he passed away, I realized that the values that my parents gave me really... They gave me the tools from the Bible to lead a life that I believe is happy, is positive, is hopeful, and that I pass those values on to my children. So it's especially relevant now as I'm here in Israel going through the corona crisis and raising my children with neighbors who uh, on every border want to kill the Jewish people, wipe the people of Israel into the sea. How do I give them the tools to really have hope, to have faith, to have love, not to fall into despair? And I believe those are the messages that we learn about in the Bible. And it's the traditions and the biblical holidays that the Jewish people have kind of preserved throughout generations um, that, that bring that to life in a really tangible way. Okay, excellent. Now, you believe that respect for the sacred is in decline, especially with our younger generation. Uh, any thoughts on what's behind that? Well, I think Christians and Jews are together in the Judeo-Christian values that we've built together. Um, and I think now we're both seeing a decline in the next generation, keeping the words of their forefathers, um, believing even in the words of their forefathers. I, I believe that the Bible isn't just another best-selling book. It is the word of God and it is divine and it's relevant for every generation. So when I see the next generation going so far from faith, actually what I realize is it's our fault and it's our problem and it's our responsibility. It doesn't have to do with them. It has to do with the fact that maybe we're not giving it over in the right way. Maybe we haven't had the tools to give them what they've needed, that they've had to separate from faith. And so my life as both um, a mother of four, I have a teenager and a uh, and, and I know it's not easy, but, you know, there are certain things that we are able to do to listen to them, to respect them, and also to bring in faith and biblical knowledge and wisdom to say this is also applicable and relevant to your life and your generation. Yeah, you know, that's a very good point. Often we, you know, as parents, maybe get a little upset with our teenagers and so forth, say, how come they're not? And, you know, maybe we do need to take a look in the mirror. First of all, are we modeling you know what, what we should be modeling, the biblical principles, how we are living our lives. Uh, you know, I mean, some, and it, and it is neat to see some families are having success in, in passing this down to their kids, right? And some segments of Jewish society as well are having success in passing on these biblical values. So what are they doing that we can learn from here in the West? You know, are they living out uh, Deuteronomy 6, for example, you know, talking about, you know, uh, the law of the Lord, right? At, in every chance, I mean, they're breakfast, lunch, noon, you know, wherever there's an opportunity, they start bringing up some biblical principles. There, there's, there's a habit we need to get into, right? That's a great point. And habit is really, I think, the key word here. That um, in Jewish tradition, there's something 
a blessing for everything, I would say. When we wake up in the morning, when we open our eyes, the first thing we say is, Blessed are you, King, O Lord, our God, for returning my soul to me. And after you go to the bathroom, you say a blessing, thanking God for letting your body function as it's supposed to function. And before you drink a sip of water, you thank God there's a blessing, say, for that. And before you, there's a blessing, say, for everything. When you see someone who was sick and then recovered, you say, Thank you, Lord, for healing the sick. Um, that it's really a habit. A big thing is the habit. First, you have to get into the habit, but then not to forget that it's very different, the habit or the laws and the heart and the soul. And that's what I see very often. Um, that balance is very difficult. It's easier to be one or the other, to very, very much follow the restrictions and the laws. Do not kill, do not steal, do not covet my neighbor's wife, do not. And and sometimes it's a lot harder to say, um, Lord, are you there? I'm having a hard time having faith today. Can you help me? That what God wants, I believe, is our heart. There's a beautiful saying that says, God doesn't care if you question him. Just don't do it behind his back. And so I believe we have to have this dialogue with God. We have to have an open dialogue and communication, a relationship, a journey. And I think when our kids see that we are both um, respecting the structure, respecting the biblical outline of how to live a, a value-filled and holy life together with the heart and the authenticity, I think that's when they connect to it. Mm. Yeah, and we want to see our kids, you know, live out a life with upstanding uh, character. Uh, I think every parent wants to see that, right? Uh, and, and, you know, even during this coronavirus time, so many people, you know, staying at home, and we might be getting bored. What a great opportunity if we're not doing this already, and it's you know, easy to lose track of in our busy, busy lifestyle these days, but is to actually around the, the table, we, we eat together, right? There's something there. You know, we talk about the Lord's Supper. There's something there when we all you know, partake together of uh, God's provision. We eat food and then come together and read a portion of scripture. And I think we might be scared as parents, as dads, sometimes to go, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not the pastor. This isn't my job. Yeah, it is actually. You know what? Just read the word of God and then just spend a bit of time talking about it. How does this apply to our lives? Ask your kids to get involved, I think. And uh, you know what? I think God's going to meet you there you know, say a prayer, you know, for the day. And uh, I think that's going to go a long ways to steering your kids toward uh, thinking about, oh yeah, God is actually here. He wants to be involved in my life, right? A hundred percent. Sometimes our biggest fear ends up being the biggest blessing that I know a lot of parents who are very terrified to be home with their children for weeks on end, but it's such a unique opportunity to be able to spend this precious time together. You know, there are so many people that on, in their dying breath, they say, I wish I would have spent more time with my family. I wish I would have listened more closely. I wish I would have been at home more. I look at this really as something spiritual, as God saying, go back to your homes, go back to your family, go back and focus on what's important. And it's very symbolic that it's happening now right before Passover, right? Passover is actually when the final supper was, when Jesus ate the matzah, the unleavened flour, right? The unleavened bread. And uh, and still today, we keep the Passover holiday just as it's outlined in the Bible. And I think about what's the story of Passover, right? What's the high point of Passover? It was when the night before the Israelites were finally redeemed, they were in their homes with the doors closed, with the blood on their doorposts so that God would pass over their home. And they were telling this story to their children and to the next generations. And they were saying, don't worry about what's happening outside. God's going to pass over our home. And don't worry because tomorrow, tonight it's scary, but tomorrow God's going to redeem us. And the next day, God really did redeem them. He took them out of Egypt, split the performed miracles, brought them to Israel. So what I'm telling my children is, you know, those biblical stories are relevant to today as well. That's us. We're in our homes with the faith that God's going to pass over any harm from doing uh, any harm to our family. And what we have to do is just stay inside. What we have to do is be together. And what we have to do is believe that tomorrow we're going to be redeemed. Mm. That's very good, you know, and again, you know, you believe very strongly in uh, having good relations with Jews and Christians together. And yes, we disagree in some key areas, but you know what, as you just shared that Passover story, boy, we can both relate to that, right? We have so much in common. Uh, so you feel it's important in today's world um, to be working together to support one another as well. Any thoughts on, on, 
on that, Jews and Christians working together? I believe it's important and critical, specifically in these times, where those who hate the Jews also hate the Christians. The fellowship doesn't only help persecuted Jews, but we help persecuted Christians in Jordan, those who have had to escape from Syria, from ISIS, from Al Qaeda, that we help those Christians in Jordan because they are persecuted as well. And I think it's very important in this day and age to stand together um, as one, um, each with our own religion, with our own belief, with our own values. But the truth is, when we look at it, we are united in, I would say, 95% of what we believe. The problem is, historically, we focused on that 5% that we think different about. And finally, now we're saying, okay, we're going to stand together just as God wants us to. I believe it's not only something physical, you know, in these times because we need to, because we're fighting the same enemy. But I think it's also something spiritual. So it's amazing to see how Christians across Canada are standing with Israel and the Jewish people. And I believe that we are united in so much Canada and Israel. And it's, I think we were each put here for such a time as this to really choose what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to do with my faith? To put our words into actions. And I love Canada. I've actually been in Canada uh, three times in the past year. And each time I just feel the warmth and the faith, even people who say that they don't have faith, even people say that they're not connected, I see that there are values these Judeo-Christian values that have uh, gone so deep into society, but if we don't protect them and make sure that we give them on to the next generation, those are the exact values that are going to feel very lost in this world. Hmm. Let me uh, shift gears here just a tad. Now, we touched on it earlier, but the Middle East also battling the coronavirus. And I know there's actually a vaccine being developed in Israel, too. Uh, I'd love to hear if you have any updates on how that's coming along. And I'd uh, love to hear um, you know, what you are doing as an organization to provide relief to the elderly and the Holocaust survivors uh, in the middle of this coronavirus outbreak. Well, uh, here in Israel, we are all on lockdown. The only reason we could leave is to go to a pharmacy or to go to, to get medical care or to go to a grocery store. And uh, we've been on lockdown for over a week already. There hasn't been any school or any um, activities going on. And the fellowship throughout the year helps thousands, tens of thousands of Israel's poorest elderly. That in Israel, we have a unique situation with the elderly because so many of the elderly are Holocaust survivors survivors, new immigrants from the former Soviet Union who came without family, who came not speaking the language. They never acquired wealth because they lived through communism and Nazism, that they came with the clothing on their back. And so the fellowship is really there the least of these, right? That's exactly what they are, that we are there to tell them Christians in Canada and North America love you and stand with you. And we bring them food boxes. And we have thousands of volunteers who do this and deliver weekly food boxes boxes and packages to the elderly. And so now what we've seen in these unprecedented times is that it's specifically these elderly who are suffering the most, who don't have any family, who don't speak the language, and now who can't leave their home. And so uh, the fellowship is there with them. We are the only organization that didn't skip even a day of delivering food aid. And as the government and many other well-meaning organizations are still having meetings of how they're going to meet this crisis, the fellowship has adapted that we haven't missed one day of delivering the food packages. We've even added an additional 15,000 elderly who can't leave their homes and have wow. no family support that we deliver them food. And you know who's delivering these food boxes on our behalf? That it says donated with love from Christians in North America is actually the military personnel. Because citizens and volunteers can't get together right now to pack the food mm. boxes. And so yeah. the Israeli... Okay. Yeah, government has given us yeah. the soldiers to pack and deliver these food boxes. Yeah, that is so good to hear. You know, people need to hear that as well. You know, often we just see the images of soldiers, you know, shooting at people. Well, you know, and sometimes that is necessary to defend the country. But you know what? There's a lot of good things that happen here as well. Uh, up against the clock here, uh, I want to actually just briefly ask you too. I know because it's uh, you just came out of a you know what is it, the third election, fourth election? I don't know how many you've had there now in Israel. It's craziness trying to work out uh, you know a coalition there with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. 
Netanyahu there. And of course, it's a key election year in, in the U.S. as well. And the U.S. And, and Canada, we've always been, you know, close allies uh, of Israel. Any, any thoughts on where that's heading or where you're hoping it's heading or what we should be praying for? Mm, it definitely feels like the world is a little bit upside down. And I'm praying that kind of, you know, uh, if if you put mud in a cup of water, first it looks really, really, really cloudy, and only then it could settle and you could separate the mud from the clean water. That I'm hoping that God kind of is shaking up the entire world so that everything could settle and it will be a better reality than we've ever known before. And I believe that those days are coming. I can feel that we're living in prophetic messianic times, but um, it's really unknown. It's really unknown. I always say, you know, anyone who doesn't believe in God, look at Israel functioning without a government for over a year. <laughs> and we're still strong yeah. and we're still safe that God definitely has our back. And I pray that we'll have a strong coalition, strong government soon. As well. Yeah. OK. Well, uh, again, Scripture tells us to pray for the peace of Israel. So let's continue uh, to do that. Really appreciate the work uh, that you're doing, the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Uh, and I want to steer people towards your website here as well, ifcj.org, and they can pick up a copy of your book, Generation to Generation. And I sure appreciate your heart there again to see uh, those biblical principles, you know, passed on down to the next generation, where we don't have to fear in the middle of something like the coronavirus, but we can trust in the one who created us and created this world, right? Amen. Amen. And thank you for the holy work that you are doing and to all of the amazing people there in Canada who continue to pray and stand with Israel. And you should know that here in Israel, we continue to pray and stand with you as well. Thank you so much, uh, Yael. Much appreciated. God bless. Yael Eckstein, she's uh, again author of Generation to Generation, available online at ifcj.org.